This is every watercolor flower you'll ever need, winter edition. Our painting tutorial today is beginner friendly, so grab a brush and join me. Hey there, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and today we're painting flowers, duh. Our supplies today are hot pressed 140 pound paper from Canson. I am going to paint everything with this number three pointed round brush. It's got a big belly and a nice fine delicate tip. Um, all the supplies are linked in the description and on my blog. And let's talk about the paint that we're gonna mix up. You can use any watercolor paint. I'm using this set from Munio. And I'm starting by mixing a very dark, deep green. Now, for me, this is a mix of navy blue, which you can see right there, and a deep thalo green, which is a really dark green. If you have a brighter green, just mix it with navy or with purple or brown. And then we're going to paint juniper first. So for the berries, I am mixing a blend of that navy with French gray and purple. I'm gonna put a, just a little bit on the tip of my brush, and we'll come over here to our paper, and I am just going to use the tip of that pointed round brush to paint a couple berries. You don't have to paint the same amount as me, just do a couple clusters, make it random. Then I'm going to grab a bit of that dark green that I mixed and we are going to just run some little stems right through those berries. From there, I start doing these tiny little linear sort of curving brush strokes um, on each side of those initial branches. I'm almost doing a little stippling motion as well. It's very rough and free, and I think painting pine is a lot of fun because you can get very playful with it. And you can see I'm just barely touching the tip of the brush to the page and kind of seeing what emerges. Sometimes it's a dot, sometimes it's a little line, and it gives us that look of uh, pine boughs. Now I'll come back to my palette and we're going to get a little bit of brown, again just on the tip of the brush, and we'll join everything together with a sort of broken brown stem. For the look of a tree branch, I like to do just kind of a messy broken line, a little bit of negative space showing through. And as I continue on here, I'll place a few more branches and maybe a few more berries. And you can make this little juniper as large or as small as you like. With those three colors, it comes together easily and it's a lot of fun to paint. And it would look really pretty on a Christmas card. Next up, I wanna paint some little berries. So I'm using just a bright red, like a cadmium red, um, or if you like, you could mix a little pink in if you want it a little cooler. Again, using just the tip of that brush, I'm kind of running it in a circular motion across the paper to make these tiny little circles, and they're all a different size. I used to always make my berries kind of uniform in size, but for this one, I think it looks pretty if some are a little smaller and some are larger, and it gives this really natural look. I'm not even sure what this plant is like a dogberry or something but we have them here in Canada in the winter. For the branches I like to mix brown and purple together. I like the way purple kind of cuts the yellow of brown and darkens it slightly and even while the red is still wet I am taking that brown and just running it along here making these messy very perfectly imperfect branches. Um, I sound like a broken record but I'm just using the very tip of that delicate brush having a good brush when you're doing these mini florals is so important because the belly of the brush holds lots of paint so you're not constantly reaching for the palette and the very delicate tip allows you to do this detail work so you can do both large and small areas with a single brush. As you move along here, you can add more berries wherever you think they'd look nice now that you've got everything joined up with these messy branches. And I think there's something about the look of all of them being a different size that's just super organic and it's very wintry. Okay, let's paint a poinsettia together. I'm doing mine in white. It's just a mix of white paint with like a tiny bit of brown in it. But if you're more comfortable, just use red. And we'll paint the poinsettia one petal at a time. Now the petals come to a nice point, so I am adding a little point on the end, but otherwise I'm just running that brush across the page and then refining the shape of each petal with the brush. 
And then here's what we're gonna do. We've done five petals, then we're going to go around the circle of this flower and tuck five more petals in each corner, sort of. So where the petals meet, we'll place another almost little diamond-shaped petal. And if you're doing white like I am, I just added even more brown to make those petals slightly darker and I left a little negative space in between. So while that is drying, let's come over to the palette, grab some green, and we're going to make these really natural leaves. And we do that by simply running that brush across the page, allowing a little shape to emerge. It's a leaf if you say it's a leaf. You can use the tip of the brush to refine the shape, maybe put a bit of a point or two or three points on the end of each leaf, but otherwise just leave it alone. By the time you're done the leaves, the flower is likely dry, so come back in with a slightly darker white or red as the case may be, and you can add just a little bit of shading in those corners and right near the flower's center. And then finally, I'm taking a little yellow ochre just on the tip of my brush, and we're going to do some dotting, and that will represent the stamen in the center of the flower. That point said it was tricky, but we got it. So let's do something simple, just a nice branch. This is a great accent for any of your floral pieces. Use the tip of the brush to do the stem. And then you know, you know the drill. Use the belly of the brush, drag it across the page or pull it towards you. Allow a, just a natural shape to emerge and then refine, refine, refine using just the tip of that brush. You can add a little more color, do whatever you like. Simple, simple, simple. Now I wanna try painting a big pine sprig, and this is really fun. You just start with a branch, could be one or two little branches like I've done there, and then using any color of green, you're doing just the tip of the brush and we're going to pull the brush towards us and we're doing these tiny fine lines. Now some can be really, really thin and others not so much. And you'll notice I add a little pressure right at the end of the brush stroke and I like the way that looks, although you may not, you may just decide to do these really, really thin strokes. And you wanna paint them in a cluster, kind of fanning out. So the fan of this pine bough is getting larger um, as it comes towards you. If you're painting it upside down like I am. And you just want to create this large sort of fan shape. And it comes together with a lot of little thin brush strokes, all of them going in different ways and coming out way out from that initial single branch or two branches. And it's just, uh, it's fun to paint because you're painting these little pine needles in every direction. And some I've done a darker green and some a more natural green. And it just looks really, really wintry. And I love that one. Okay, let's do a shade of classic, and that is eucalyptus. It's always a good idea. It makes another great accent to add to your florals. Start with that thin curving stem, and then you're using the belly of the brush to make these natural leaf shapes that are a little bit larger. Some are going to be very circular, some might be more of a pointed oval, and some will just be downright very thin, and you can see how I'm doing that there. Uh, sometimes you're putting one on each side of that branch, and other times right across the branch, for a very natural and three-dimensional look. Eucalyptus is so much fun to paint. Play around with the color. You can see I've added a lot of blue to my green for this very cool tone. Play around with the size and the shape and don't worry about messing it up. Let's paint some holly together. What could be more Christmassy? I am starting with red, nice dark, rich cherry red here, and I am painting clusters of berries. So you can do as many clusters as you like. And then here's how I wanna paint this. Using just water, I am painting like this messy little leaf, and then I am taking a bright green paint and releasing it into it. Then I'm gonna grab a darker green, that deep thallo green, and I'm gonna release a little bit of that into the wet area. This didn't quite go how I wanted, like the um, initial leaf shape wasn't wet enough or it was drying very quickly, so I wasn't quite getting the spread of paint that wet into wet that I wanted, so I'm gonna try it again. I've got a, you know, just a very light green water basically, and then I am releasing some green into that wet leaf area that I've painted, and I'm using two different colors of green. Again here, I'm not getting like as much movement as I want. I'm I'm gonna redeem myself though, I'm gonna get it. Painting a mess 
messy leaf shape with just water or like a lightly tinted water. And there we go. I'm getting that wet into wet movement. I have redeemed myself. <laughs> I'm using two greens and they're blending really beautifully. And I want them to sit inside the leaf shape, but not fill it entirely. If you can see on that third one, there's some really light spots and I think that looks nice. So start with the water, just the leaf shape, and then grab your green, then go and grab a darker green and you're releasing both the greens into that wet area. So I kind of nailed it on the third and fourth leaf, but you know what? They all look fine and just play around and practice. This wet into wet technique is a lot of fun. It's messy, it's pretty. And if you get kind of more dull leaves like I did for the first two, just add a little bit of darker green on top once they dry and that will give you that extra dimension. Let's do another simple cluster of berries together. This time I'm using purple and I actually like to mix a little bit of brown with my purple so that it has a more natural look. And again, just painting a random cluster of berries. I've kept them all close to the same size, but they don't need to be perfect. Then we're gonna grab a bit of that brown on the tip of our brush. And I am going to do this little kind of U-shaped cluster of tiny branches at the top and then just these long curving branches or stems below and maybe I'll add a few leaves. It doesn't really matter. That's just a good accent for your winter florals. And last but not least, we are going to do another pine bough. And this is more of, I guess we did juniper, um, like a white pine and this is kind of like I don't know another kind of pine <laughs> so I started with a th stem of three and then using a bit of green on the tip of my brush I'm doing these quick and short and thin little brush strokes and they're sort of dry and messy then another thing you can do is as you work your way down add a bit of water just these you know clear water uh, same brush stroke motion and then you're coming in with the green and yeah same motion putting those tiny little linear brush strokes over top of the wet area and it kind of makes this messy bit that looks nice and helps it have a nice watercolor look. You can also add water after you've done the green brush strokes to kind of muss it up a bit. So there's two ways to kind of go about making sure this evergreen isn't too stiff looking and just uh, finish up the stem and that's pretty much it. We'll complete our little winter mini florals today by just doing a bit of wet on dry. So now that everything has dried, we can layer more color and we can get a lot of precision because we don't have to worry about anything running or bleeding. So you can see I've added a darker red to the holly, a bit of dark green on the eucalyptus, maybe put a little bit of darker green on some of the leaves, say for the poinsettia or the uh, evergreen or even the holly. And it just gives it that extra bit of oomph. <laughs> Well, that's about it. I hope you'll try these winter plants. They're a lot of fun to paint. And if you're in Canada or many other countries, you got a long winter ahead of you. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.